Okay, how we doing out there? First things first, my name's Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint or Supreme Ambient Light Technology Screens. All right, so today we're going to do a demonstration on painting over a gray screen paint or whatever you want to call it uh, with our Supreme uh, 12 or Supreme Black Ambient Light Rejection 12. Now, before some people go, oh, wait a minute, is that? No, it's not. This is just basic paint in my basement using white and black paint. That's all it is because I have customers who have screen paints that they've made themselves using just white and gray paint. I did it way back when I first started off, when I first got went down this line. There was a paint on YouTube that you can make your own gray paint. And I, I made I didn't make the product. I couldn't make the product because two of the um, uh, screen paints were discontinued, so I couldn't make it. But this is just regular gray and white paint. That's all it is. This is what I have here. Now, keep in mind for anybody who comes in here and says, well, that's no, because if you can't tell the difference between that and gray and black paint that I made downstairs in the basement, then that gives you a lot to think about. Because keep in mind, a particular person does not own the right to gray and black paint which means anybody who makes this stuff and paints it on anything, that person doesn't own the right to it. This is for anybody who makes, it's just gray and black paint. That's all it is, mixed together to get this tone right here. And as I said before, if I want to darken this tone, I just add more black to it. If I want to light it, I add less. So people do these all the time. This is just showing people the difference. Right now I have a church who went out and they did a kind of, they mixed the gray and black together uh, to make their own screen paint and the screen came out it, it just horribly horribly so this is what we're going to do in this demonstration we're going to use two forms of projectors we're going to use i like doing this demonstration because we get to use a thousand lumen projector and we get to use a 4300 lumen projector like i said instead of taking something and hitting it with a high power projector and giving it that voila effect we're going to break it down we're going to have two which is the sony we're going to use both sony's this right here is my sony uh sorry VPL uh, CS4 projector SVGA. This is a thousand lumen projector, 600 by 800 res, of course, 720p. Uh, this projector only does four point three. I did a demonstration on this one outside. The big boy at the bottom is, well, keep in mind that smaller projector, 600 by 800 res. The big boy at the bottom is 4,300 lumens, a massive, huge difference. 4,300 lumens, 1920 by 1,200. This projector is WUXGA. So there it is, WUXGA, SVGA projector right there. This one right here is 1920 by 1,200, if I haven't said already, again, 4,300 lumens. So we'll get a chance to do a little, we're not going to paint the whole screen, we're just going to do a splatter effect, which means... We're just, you know, I'm going to do a demonstration one day, but I got to be in the backyard to do it. I'm just going to do an all white screen and I'm going to take a bucket of our screen paint. I'm not even going to paint it. I'm just going to splash it across the side of the screen and just light it up with a projector. I ain't going to bother painting it. Show you how fast that stuff reacts. And then we got our fan over there so we can get it to dry. All right. So let me get my trod over here so we can hook it up on the tripod. And meanwhile, you can check out my screen over there. Got my demonstration right there. I got my screen running right now. See how the windows I have my environment? Just because my screen lays against the window, I got windows that wrap around my entire area in here. All right, so whoever had this house obsessed with windows. We can do this with one hand. We don't need this right here. I'll just use this when I do the demonstration there. So we'll put that right there. All right, so we'll grab our paint right here. And as I told you before, you know, when it comes to these gray screens, the contrast is everything. Again, OLED TVs, if you look at them, are black. They're not gray. They wouldn't spend all that money to develop that technology. Oh, I forgot to. Now, just so um, we can show you that this affects not only gray screen paint, but also affects projection screens. We'll bring out the delete, I mean, sorry, elite screens. Now keep in mind, as I told you before, Cinema Gray 5, or sorry, Cinema Gray, this screen right here is gonna cost you 800 bucks. The darker the screen, the more expensive it becomes. Then you get to that Cinema Gray 5D. Much more darker screen here. We're talking about 14, 1500. 
Then you get into the Dark Star 9, which is a darker screen. Now, keep in mind, the white level on here is not going to be as high as here, and it's not going to be as high as here. Where the contrast is going to be amazing here, but it's going to be lacking here and here. All right? But this screen costs three grand. Uh, just to let you know, too, um, everybody knows this. You go to ABS Forms. I'm not a big fan of them, but even they will tell you that you can't get a 4K proper display off a white and gray screen. It has to be a dark screen. Why do you think Black Diamond doesn't have a gray, light gray screen? They don't have one. They don't even have a white screen. They don't develop them. Because they know exactly where the technology lays. All right, so let's get this started. Let's shake this up. That's all we need to do. Open it up. Oopa. And like I said, anybody wants to leave a comment, yeah, I don't think you want to do that by saying that, hey, is that, if you can't tell the difference between the two, then that gives you something to think about. Because like I said, this is just gray and black paint in my basement. That's all it is. That's all it is. Just gray and black paint. Just a little gray and black in it. Just mix it together. I didn't even measure it. Just threw it in there and it was done. All right, so we'll take some of this. We're not going to paint the whole screen. We're just going to do a little, a little, what you want. Look how dark that looks. Look how beautiful that looks. I'm not going to paint the whole screen. You probably said, why would you go in the center? Because I don't plan to paint the whole screen. We're just going to do a little, little whatever. It'll make a difference where we paint at. Just going to put a little splatter. Now, I like doing these sloppy screens because it just gives off more of an effect on what you're missing from your screen. I'm not going to do half down the middle. I had somebody saying that, well, if you want more of an effect, you got to do right down the middle. I've done those already. I'm not trying to brag or anybody, but I know some people come down and they think it's my first video or, you know, I'm new at this. I've never done this before, but how about we do the corners? we we'll do the corners too. Do some of the corners. I'm just gonna randomly just paint whatever on this. These are the demonstrations that actually get more hits, and I'll tell you why, because it's a shock factor. People come in and just see that screen. When I had that white screen here with that uh, that projector over there, and they just saw how much the screen was missing. Especially when that bear came on. That was a pretty good shot when the bear came on. Alright, so we're just gonna do a little that's uh Nothing special. Just a little there and there and there. Now, keep in mind, I've told you this before, that this screen is going to produce a higher white level. I don't even know why people ask me that question half the time. They go, well, what about the white levels? Shouldn't it be equal to the same? No, seriously, we've all been to kindergarten. We all have had colors before, right? Who have ever told you that a white screen or a gray screen is going to produce the same white level as a darker screen? The object of designing black technology is to make it, to give it the ability to be able to produce a high enough white level where it doesn't disrupt the picture quality, where it doesn't come out so dark that you can't see the image. That's the key point right there. That's like, you know, me telling somebody, okay, you got a white projection screen. Let me see you get a jet black image off of that. Ain't going to happen. Can't do it. All right, that's basically about it. We're done with that. Later on, I'll just paint over the whole entire thing because I need to use this. This is plexiglass. I need to use this for something. All right, so I'm going to put you guys in the trod over here. Put you right up in there like so. All right, how's everybody doing this morning? I hope fine. I'm sorry. I'll come on out and even ask, how's your day going? Hope you're having a good day. There we go. I'm going to put you over there. I'm going to move the camera to the side because I am in my morning wear and I don't want to scar you for life because I probably will. So let's put you over there at the popcorn machine. better let's see our makeshift screen over there Ooh, man I'm telling you that crazy looking or what all right so let me come over here 
And let's turn on the projector. I'm going to turn on the 43 first. And let's figure out where my phone is at so I can run some feet through here. 28%, that's not bad. 28%, it's not bad at all. We got 4,300 lumens. 43 walking 100 lumens. All right, so let's go over and let's grab, um, let's see. What do we need? Come on, phone act right. Um, let's go with, um, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to figure out something here we can use. All right. Hmm. All right, we'll go with the, uh, no, no, no. Now, see, with our screen paint, as it's wet, it's dark. When it starts to dry, it becomes lighter. Let me adjust that projector a little bit better. There you go. So you can see that bright red form over there. Uh, 10 feet, around 10 feet. My screen in here is around 106 inches. So my projector used to sit over there where the sound bar was at. My living room is, is, I have a quite lengthy living room. But this projector right here is a little different because when I bought that projector, that projector had an extended lens on it, like a long throw lens. So I had to bring it back even farther just to get a bigger screen. But yeah, about 10 feet. Go to uh, projectorcentral.com, uh, put in the Sony VPL FH30, and then there are two links will pop up. Hit one of those links. When you go into that link, it'll give you the specification of the projector, and then it will have a calculator distance throw. So you can see exactly how much room you may have in your environment versus the screen. Also, too, it'll give you the proper measurements of what screen you want to put in there by height and length. So that comes in handy because I use that for building 235.1s. All right, we'll start off with this with some lizards. Now keep in mind, as you know, this screen is much darker than the light gray screen. And look at the white levels on that technology. That's why I said when anybody tries to portray the 9, and keep in mind, the 9 has a higher white level. So that's why I know that when I see demonstrations of people displaying a nine on a light on a, a gray screen and the nine looks dark, we know something's wrong there because I'm showing you right here. Now, as soon as the screen dries, because I'm not going to go by the gray screen paint because it's gray screen paint. We're going to grab one of those certified screens in the next room. We're going to grab those elite certified screens and bring those in. Let's see if we can go back here a minute on that. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning on that. The screen is still wet. It'll take a while. It'll dry in a few. Sorry we don't have sound here. I do apologize. Now, one of the things I've noticed when I watch demonstrations being done on these particular screens, they will never show contrast. I told you before, they can't show contrast because the lighter screen will fail miserably because they can't pull contrast. And Sarah's screen is still wet, 
But as it's drying, look how bright the image is getting. The brighter, the more it dries, the brighter it's going to get. Now, let me come over here and show you. Do, of course, I like to do the um, OLED demonstrations. Oh, we got a commercial there, if I let that play through. background in any OLED demonstration it's jet black a gray screen can't pick it up that's why they will do this demonstrations in the dark it has to be done in the dark because that's the only way they'll get a fighting chance to produce some kind of a proper image but other than that and they don't pick up contrast where our screen is picking up a bright enough level to be able to blend into a gray screen I always like to go back to Batman. So you can see up close, bring you a little closer up to the screen. You can get an idea of what you're missing. And this is 4,300 lumens. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I really do. So a lot of the screens can't be used. They have, that's why I said they got a better of a funny chance, as I said before, with the lights off. But if you put the lights on, no, the screen's going to wash out automatically. But some people may say, well, you know, I got a dedicated theater room. It's designed for that. Okay, that's what it's designed for, right? But more and more people are buying projectors. They're replacing projectors. They want TVs and projectors instead of TVs. So, in order for you to see your screen properly, you're going to have to be in the dark. And it doesn't make a difference because even if your projector is 4,300 lumens, you're still going to be in the dark. back here a minute. Just a little bit.
putting your push. You see it now? See how much of your image is gone? Now, I'll show you something else. A little bit more interesting. Screen's still wet. But look how look how um, faded out the reds are. My screen is still wet and it's still producing a brighter red than a gray screen. See, if that screen was too dark, it wouldn't be able to pull that up at all. The contrast level would oversaturate the screen to be no white levels, and that image would be so dark, you wouldn't be able to see it. If it was, it was important enough, what's important enough? White light. Let's see. Remember, I painted the corners of the screen, too. You can get up close and see. See how deep and rich the color is? Yeah, the screen is faded. But only that, look at the black levels. Look how high, when some people, when they look at that, they gotta understand that that screen is producing a high enough, bright, vivid picture that's match going against a screen that's a couple shades lighter than it. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out. Let me see. I love doing the OLED, so OLED, OLED demonstrations are that reality check on so many levels. It's that reality check on so many levels when you do OLED demonstrations on how much you're missing. So that's what they try to portray 9s and 12s to be. So dark that the image does not pull up. That the colors are dark and they're dirty. You look at that, you're watching that right there. As that screen dries, that screen is getting brighter and brighter. And not only is it blending in with nice, beautiful, rich colors, but it's pulling a contrast level that a gray screen can't even do. So we'll see Mr. Fishy pass by. Look at the difference on the black, look at the difference on the gray. And keep in mind, that entire background, and if you do an OLED demonstration right now on your phone, that background is supposed to be black, not gray. And let me know when you've ever seen a gray OLED projection screen, or I'm sorry, <laughs> a gray OLED TV. I've never seen a gray OLED TV. Those demonstrations were meant to basically highlight that screen. So any black screen is going to be to pull it up. But our screens, not only, now keep in mind, some say, okay, contrast, contrast, contrast. Yeah, contrast is very important, but keep in mind, a black screen has to pull a white level too, because if it doesn't pull a white level, like I said, that fish wouldn't be that bright. That beta fish wouldn't be that bright. It'd be nice and dark. You'd be able to see it. Let's see. Let's go over and let's grab, uh, let's grab some, some these big boys right here. Fish right here, the deep dark blues. I'm 
the right. And the point on this. All right, so that's the 43 that we're using. We're going to do a black contrast level test. Now, this right here is called a black contrast level test. See right there. Let's come back here. Bring all the way back to the beginning. Which I'm trying to bring it back. Now, the object of this test is basically. You see that the image is going to pull, pull nice, beautiful, bright images, but the background is supposed to come up black. Well, I'll pause it right there just for a minute. Right there. You see the difference in that flower? Look how the red pops, and look right here how the red is washed out. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab... Like I said, there's no point in doing a demonstration. I'm going to break it myself in. Yeah, you're going to see me pop up on the camera. Spit sir all over your screen. It's your fault. All right, so we are going to, hold for a minute. Let me move this to the side for a minute. Let me grab a hat. We're going to take our sample sheets of elite screens right there. There we go. That over there, right there. We are going to start off with uh, no disrespect to elite in any way. Let's start off with the Cinema Gray, which is a very, very light, 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 light screen paint. And it has a 1.0 gain right there. This is an $800 screen, about $800 screen. Thing around that price. Yeah. Yeah, if you see these on my feet, the reason why these are on my feet is I don't track stuff all through the house, which I haven't had a bad habit of doing. Alright. Yeah. We'll put half of that. Matter of fact, I'm going to put it half there. Stick it over here. So. Screen's still wet, but I gotta turn off the fan. Because it's going to blow the samples all over the place. All right, so we have, there you go. There is the elite screen right there. On 4,300 lumens right there. Let's go back and grab the, the fishy fishies right there. So we can see right there. I think I might get an email on this one. But, oh, sorry about that. My bad. I'm right in front of the screen. So that's a lead screen. That's gray screen paint. Like I said, it's this gray and white screen paint mix. That's all it is. Well, no, you can't. I love my work. I love what I do. It's not a grind for me. It's what I love to do. It's not a grind. It, it, it's not work to me. It's fun. I love it. I went to school and I went to, I caught, a lot of people don't understand that when I was in my, uh, my, my, when I was 18 or 19 or my age, I went to restaurant school, man. I went to Paris and studied. I did a little IT tech, a little bit of everything, but I like this. This is the field that I like. I love this. You know what I mean? I, I look forward to this. Sometimes I get up in the morning, man. I'm like, I'm like Christmas time, man. I can't wait to do the demonstration. I got, it's too early and I got to wait. You know what I mean? I get all excited about it. You know what I mean? When it rains outside, I'm excited. When it's sunny outside, I'm excited. When it snows, I'm excited. Yeah, I like, I love it. I love it. This is what I love. It's not about it, you know what I mean? I have I have I have things that I've invested in that I can quit today and never do this ever again. But I choose to do this because I love it. I, what else would I do? I've talked about retirement a few times, but I've thought about it. What would I do? This is what I like. I love building screens, man. I love this kind of work. I do. Love everything that comes with it. The criticisms, the haters, I love it all. You know what I mean? I love it. Wouldn't give it up for the world. All right, so already we have the, um, we have the, uh, whatchamacallit, we have the 
or we're, we're already displaying the uh, great cinema fight. G, right there. Oh, not sorry, sorry, the great cinema. Why is my, my projector needs to focus a little bit better? There we go. Focus is much better. All right. Uh, let's do that one on an OLED demonstration. See what goes on with that. Now, like I said, this is the more cheap, one of the cheaper screens that they have are the white screens. The white screens are the most cheapest screens because pretty much those are the bottom dollar screens. Uh, when you get to something with a little bit more gray to it, then it's going to cost you a little bit more. So we're talking about $800, maybe uh, seven or $800 for that cinema gray, right? Now, if we go and we grab, um, I'm going to get something that has a little bit of everything so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let's grab, uh, let me see, I got one here. All right, we're going to grab this one right here. This will give you a better understanding here. Because these screens are automatically going to produce those white levels. That's definitely going to happen. But we want, it, we want something that has the ability to produce contrast. All right, so we're doing, this is a test, user test that they have to test your screen's contrast levels. There. Okay. Now, I'll go back a little farther. I think the best one to do. I think, you know what? I'm going to grab the best one. The hardest demonstration, you know what I'm going to choose. The hardest demonstration to do is a star field demonstration. It's a really hard demonstration for a gray screen to, um, to try to uh, try to deal with. All right. Let me see what happened here. For some reason, we didn't come up. We're going to do that one again. All right. Let's see if we can find it. There we go. There we go. We just found it. There we go. All right. There we go. Starfield demonstration. That's the hardest demonstration that you will ever see a gray screen try to attempt. All right. So, as you can see with the gray screen paint, we're going to now put up the Cinema Gray 5D which is a little darker than the uh, Cinema Gray. I'm gonna put that one right here. All right. Now you have a much better difference. As you see, it's a darker screen. The Gray Cinema 5D is a much darker screen than the Cinema Gray. As you can see, the contrast level looks much better than on this screen. It kind of looks like the screen paint we just made, which is kind of messed up because I kind of threw that stuff together. I mean, literally, I threw that stuff together. I just basically just grabbed some black paint, white paint, and just splashed it into a bucket and just shook it up and threw it on the screen. So I didn't measure jack. Would I make it? No. There's no point making it. All right, now, that screen right there, uh, 13, 14, 15, depending on where you go, $100 for 100 inch for that screen because it's a little bit darker. Now we'll go with the Dark Star 9. This is a $3,000 screen right here. Oh, we will put this right here. All right. I think I need to take that bottom down because see the, the Dark Star 9 screen uses a form of kind of reflective surface so it has to lay flat. If not, you don't get a good picture quality out of it. So you gotta be fair here. So we gotta bring this down a little bit more. You gotta put it there, all right. Lay it flat against the screen. All right. Now look at the Dark Star 9. Dark Star 9 is producing a way much better contrast level than the Cinema Gray or the Cinema Gray 5D and the screen paint that I made, right? So that's what I mean by when somebody sits there and tells you, well, um, um, it's the same as a gray screen. No, no, no. You can never compare Dark Star 9 to a gray screen. Never. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's going to look real nice 
Um, you got to check out our customers' demonstrations on our Facebook fan page. As a matter of fact, I said, I got to go back upstairs and I'm building that page right now on the website. You can go in and check out our customers' work. So when someone was showing you, I saw the demonstration of somebody displaying uh, how high the white levels are on a uh, Dark Star 9. They missed the key point of a Dark Star 9. The key point, because any one of these screens will produce a high enough white level easily. The key point of a Dark Star 9 is the contrast on that screen because it can produce a much darker, much more beautiful, more vivid image where a light gray screen is going to fade out. Now, we'll take the Dark Star 9 and we'll place that. Of course, we know these screens are not going to do well. Take that off and we'll put it on our screen. Will stay because our paint will not allow anything to stick to it. Oh, yeah, our paint will not allow anything to stick to it, like at all. Period. We'll try to go a little higher up, and then that way maybe we can hit some of the screen paint here that will allow it to stay a little better. All right. So, here, see, dark. See, when I mean the dark star nine, you have to in line it with the screen. Let me see right here. There we go. I'm sitting in front of the projector. I'm sorry, people. So there we go. Dark Star 9s, when it comes to our technology, they're gray screens. But it's a much more advanced screen than a gray screen. You can never ever compare a gray screen, oh wait, hold on for a minute, to a Dark Star 9. You can't do it. People. So we'll go back to the bright colors again. Now you know what's interesting about this little picture right here? If you just notice that black screen just blended into a gray cinema 5D and to these other screens. And keep in mind, like I said, my screen is darker than all these screens up here. So that's how I know, basically, when I saw, and now keep in mind, from the demonstration I saw, the 9 was doing an amazing job. It was doing exactly what it was supposed to be doing. Um, but the 9 has higher white levels than the black. So I know for a fact that something was right there. But the one he was displaying, yeah, that's what 9s are designed to do. That bright, vivid image, that's what they're designed to do. It's 9. You know what I mean? And on top of that, that screen is bronze. I'm going to paint you a brown screen one day. Well, actually, no, we'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to paint you a brown, like a tannish screen and show you what it looks like when you hit it with a white level. It is a yellowish look to it, like a yellowish brownish look to it. All right, now we've done this already with the 4300 lumen projector. Sony, let's go switch over to a thousand lumens. So we're gonna take this out real quick. And we're gonna switch over to thousand lumens. Sony. All right. I got a Christie projector I'm about to order today. I can't wait. A black Christie projector. If you haven't heard of Christie's, check them out. That's a high performance projector. I found it. We're going for a good price. 4,000 lumens. Uh, WXGA. Um, yes. So I don't have a Christie here. I used to own a few of them, but I sold them, which I shouldn't have did. They have amazing picture um, color capabilities, but I'm going to get one today. Order one today. Keep in mind, this is an older projector, so it will take time to warm up. It's an old projector. Let me see if I can get the... Nope, that's the focus. What we got going on here? There we go. It's overlapping everything. Now let's get that focus to go a little better. There we go. So that's a thousand lumens right there. So I can show you that we're using that projector. There we are, Sony. 1000 lumen projector, SVGA, sorry, F, yeah, SVGA, 600 by 800 res, 720p. Now we just watched that demonstration on a 43. We're doing it on a 1000 lumens now.
That's a big change and shift when it comes to lumens, 1,000 to 43. And this projector does not have a contrast rating. It doesn't. Look at the Gray Cinema 5D right there over there in the corner, which is blended into our screen. And I'll show you how far my projector is sitting back. So you can see we're not sitting right on top of the screen. This is the kind of demonstrations you should be seeing. You should see the difference between, where's the difference between a 4300 lumen projector, a powerhouse, and a cheap 1000 lumen projector, a 600 by 800 SVGA projector, what's the difference? How does that difference between if I'm using this on a certified screen? What does it look like? I mean, people who basically have the money to spend five and 20 and $150,000 for a setup are going to come in and ask, what have you tested your screen against? I'm going to see your screen against something certified. But usually when you watch these demonstrations, like I said, with these high performance screens, they're not using those Sony projector. The projector I'm using right now, you would never see that projector in any demonstration, not even the big boy. Now you'll see 4K projectors at 5,000, 6,000 lumens on those screens. You'll see high end setups on there. But I can come and show you our screen paint on two different forms of projectors that are completely different in every category and I can show you against a certified screen and I can show you against cheap screen paint and I can show you the difference. And you see how big a picture I'm getting? See the background where the kitchen's at? So, you know, you do a demonstration. You got to do it thoroughly. So my father used to always say, do it right or don't do it at all. Let's get over here. Let's take this off. I'm just going to put this down here at the bottom. Because against our screen, it's not going to be able to pull out that contrast level properly. Our screen is going to produce a higher contrast and it's going to make that screen look gray. All right, so let's get up close. See right there, see where the levels are fading right there, how the blues are fading. You want a better screen, you got to pay that $1,500 for that screen over there. And if you want much better, that screen to blend it even better than three grand. Yeah, this is like, like I said, this is no different, no different than, well, I have customers who paint over these, but sorry about that leaf, but they do, they do paint over. I had a customer paint over a black diamond. I couldn't believe that one right there. Painted over a black diamond, $5,000 screen. But he just wasn't happy because of the fact that he couldn't pull images up on, on the side. Some screens do have something called narrow viewing combs. They just can't pull an image. We already know. Let's go back for a minute.
Okay, see how deep the reds are? Go back to our fish. That's why I can do this. So my light's on. This is with just with the window light. All right. So we'll swap out again. Let's go over to take out the thousand lumen projector. Keep in mind, just because we start off at a thousand lumen doesn't mean we're going to have a thousand when we make contact. It's going to have way less than that. All right, let's go over to, uh, let me see. As a matter of fact, let's go in between. My Sonic Projector 3600 lumen projector. This one is 3600 lumens. This would be too easy. We need something harder than this, so I'm not going to use this one. Let me go get a 2500 lumen projector. That's what we need to get. Go ahead. Let's see if we can get Get this one. This is a 2500 lumen projector. We're going to use this one to Casio. Uh, also, to note this up, if you buy Casio projectors with this particular model, the plugs aren't the same. That's the plug on the back of a Casio projector. They're kind of weird looking. So, if you buy one that doesn't come with the plug, uh, you can get the plug for around seven or eight bucks. I gotta see if I have it over here first. And that's the laser, you don't want to walk from that. Ah, it's 2,500 lumens. That's not good enough. Nah, you know what? That's 2,500 lumens. That's, that's too much power. That's too much power. 25. 25. How about we use the Panasonic? Bam! This one is 1,500 lumens. I think I'm happier with this one right here. 1500 lumens, 25 would be too easy. So let's go with 15 instead. Voila. So we're gonna take this off. This is why I have so many projectors. <laughs> why do you have so many freaking projectors? Because I got to swap out some demonstrations, man. I mean, I'm not gonna show you a high power projector and go, wow, look at it. No, I'm gonna do swap outs. One of these days, I'm going to have a setup, I'm going to have all my projectors all hooked up, and I can swap them out through the screens. That'd be cool. That would be freaking cool. Alright, so I'm going to set this over here. Because it's in its own world. And we're going to disconnect the big boy Sony. Ugh. And put it over here. And then we're going to grab a 1600 lumen projector now see this projector is kind of weird because the lumen count and contrast are so close like it's 15 once 15 once 16 we'll just go with 1500 lumens or 16 i don't know i'll look it up but it's all the same i have to figure out which one's which it's just so close together it's not like my ultra short though has a 10,000 to one contrast this has a 1600 to one contrast oh that's interesting 1600 to one contrast Use it on a light gray screen. Let's see what happens with that. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's hook this monster up. Ah, there we go over here. We'll grab some video feed from here. Run it in. Because the projector I'm using is Sony. I think Sony has something like a 3,000 to 1 contrast. The projector over here has no contrast at all. 
But this one over here, I think it's around 16,000 to one. Yeah, it is. It's 16,000 to one contrast, 1,500 lumens. Yes. Oh, sun's coming out today. You know what that means? I'm going to have the little projector outside in the evening. Ha ha ha! People say, Ken, do you drink coffee in the morning? No, coffee drinks me. Coffee sits around the water cooler with other cups of coffee and said, man, if it wasn't for that cup of Ken, I don't think I would have made it in the day. Yes. I was a hyperactive kid. My brothers used to give me gum and watch me run into the wall, like really hyper. Everything had to be sugar free. You know what sugar free was like when I was coming up as a kid? It was downright disgusting. You have no idea if you lived in that era. And you know what sugar free tastes like? It was not what you. They, what sugar free today tastes amazing, but sugar free when I was a kid, it was like a common taste. It was like pretty much like drinking gasoline. I mean, you could probably pour that stuff in your car and probably travel halfway across the world with that stuff. It was nasty. It was just really nasty. All right. So project this projector has to warm up too also. The 43s don't. They just bam. Come on. I got to get a separate sound system for this projector because it has no form of audio out whatsoever, period. It just doesn't have it. Xbox? I have one. I have an Xbox, but my Xbox is giving me all kinds of freaking jacked up problems. And I'll tell you why it's giving me jacked up problems. I don't know. Maybe you can figure it out for yourself. But every time I go in and set up an account on the Xbox system, um, if, when I go back in, like if I don't play for a couple of days and like I have it unplugged or something, I don't know. And I go back in to play, it tells me my account's not there. And I got to set up another account. For some reason, it's not retaining the memory. So I just have to get another one. But all in all, uh, I'm a Sony. I love Sony. I, I am. I, I fell in love with Sony. I think what basically pushed me away from the Xbox system is when they had that DRM nonsense. And that's pretty much what did it for me. I went out and just bought myself, built myself a gaming PC. Um, and then after that, um, uh, after that, after the gaming PC, uh, my, my PC, something broke on it. It was a very expensive part, and I didn't want to spend the money to replace it. So I had to make a choice whether to go with the new Xbox, the Xbox One, or basically the PS4. And I chose the PS4, and I bought some VR glasses to go with it. And I've been in love with it ever since. And I, I've been playing on Xbox since when they first came out with that giant, huge controller. You know what I mean? You know, the big giant one with the huge symbol in the front, the big jewel symbol in the front. That's why, that's how long I've been playing. I'm a huge fan, but I, I still love Xbox. I just, I lean toward the PS4 now because I kind of like that better. I'm not one of those people say one system's better than the other. It, it, it's what, it, what suits you. You know what I mean? I don't go in there screaming that nonsense. It's what suits you. You know what I mean? Whatever makes you happy at the end of the day. That's what it's all about. We're all gamers. That's what it comes down to. All this side-by-side -side nonsense about who's better. Yeah, i9. The last time I had a computer, it was an i7. That's the last time I had one, was an i7. But you ever had a 2011 motherboard? I bet you 100 bucks you don't got a 2011 motherboard. That's a server board. Check it out. Look up 2011 motherboards. That board right there holds around, and a lot of you not, look it up. Think I'm joking. That board holds 264 gigs of RAM. It's a monster. And it doesn't hold one core processor, it holds four. Twelve core processors fit in that machine. Look it up, they're called 2011 motherboards. That's what I had in my gaming PC. I built a server board in there so that way I can host games when I play. I wouldn't have to have a separate server because my, my, my motherboard actually was a server. And they're called 2011s. Now they might have updated them now, but when I, was, when I had mine, yeah, mine was a 2011 motherboard. I had, uh, at the time, I had PC-3000OC. 
Uh, I was using two Tesla video cards, 15 terabytes of hard drive space. Um, I had a customized liquid cooling system that I had to build. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm, I'm quite aware of that hardware, but you got to look at the 2011 server boards. I mean, we're talking about 264 gigs of RAM. That's freaking monstrous. And we're not talking about one core, we're talking about four cores in that bad boy. And keep in mind, you, you can't find a power supply high enough to run all that equipment in there. So the key thing is you can run two power supplies in your motherboard. You just have to get an ATA, um, 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 they have Y adapters. They used to have ATA, ATA Y adapters now. We can run two power supplies into one motherboard. But when I was coming up, there was no such thing. So you had to get the soldering gun out and make your own parts. So I came up in an era, I don't know how you old you are, but I came up in an era where basically, you know, you had to breadboard everything with soldering and, and circuits and parts and stuff like that. You pretty much did your own repairs. If your machine went down, you went in there with that solder sucker and diffused that solder and pulled out parts and, you know, tested them, all that. That's the era I grew up in. So if you wanted something, you had to build it. Literally, you had to build it. Yeah, I understand, like, it's top-notch, top-notch, but, like I said, you know, people want to go PC Master Race, and they want to go all console, it doesn't make a difference. At the end of the day, it's what makes you happy, that's what it comes down to. At the end of the day, we're all gamers. I'm 52. I've been around since Vector Graphics and Pong. But, at the end of the day, ah, bird! You get the same name as I do. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I just noticed that. It took a while, but I just noticed that. Like, oh, you have the same name I have. But, um, yeah, um, hold on for a minute. I just want to swap this up real quick. Yeah, um, what I was saying was, uh, whew, yeah, at the end of the day, man, it's about what you like, man. It's not about, um, who's better, who's got the best system, or none of that. It's about what you enjoy, what you like to do at the end of the day. Because I couldn't care less if my friends were Xbox and PC gamers and whatever, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if it kills your stress, puts you in another world, takes you out of this world and puts you into another world and makes your day much more brighter, then it's doing its job. That's all to it. And Switch, Game Switch fans, hey, you know, there's a lot of cool games on Game Switch I want to pick up. Yep, that's why, that's why everything, man, that's what I say. Some people have everything and some people have, you know, this, that, and the other. My collection upstairs, let's go back, my friend. My collection upstairs, I have freaking the Neo Geo. I own um, FM Marty, which was an old system. You know, there was a Scotty Pippen. Did you realize Scotty Pippen had a gaming system? It actually had an Apple, Apple, uh, Apple motherboard in it. Old Macintosh Apple motherboard in it. And Genesis and all that other crazy stuff. Turbo Graphics 16. Oh my goodness, Turbo Graphics 16 with Bonk's Adventure and the CD ROM. When the CD ROMs were coming out, Sega. Sega was online. Did you know that? Sega was online. They had something called SegaNet. It was a cartridge that plugged into the front of it, and it had a 14.4 modem on it. God. 14.4 modem, and it was called SegaNet. Also, N64 was online, too. They had something called SharkNet. Check that out. It was basically an adapter that you can plug into the front of your N64 to bring it online. Yep. Yes, sir. -y. TurboGrafx-16. Oh man, yeah, you don't, you don't know, man. You gotta look that up. TurboGrafx-16. TurboGrafx-16 had cartridges the size of credit cards. And you would slide them in this little tiny slot. I'm pretty sure you remember that, right? Dreamcast had Dreamcast. I had Dreamcast, American and Japanese version. I have had House of the Dead with the gun. The Japanese version. Yeah. Power Stone, Power Stone, I had Power Stone, who remembers Blue Stinger, I had Blue Stinger on there, Dynamite Cop on there, Dynamite Cop was the Japanese version of Die Hard, yep, yeah, all those man, yeah, I had, older than that man, and I was talking about this yesterday, I had, um, I had a uh, Pong at the house. I had an Odyssey too. ColecoVision, Odyssey, the Atari. Atari was hot, man. If you had an Atari, you had money. You had money. Kids bragged about that. Yeah, I got an Atari at home. They bragged about that one. If you had an Atari. I gotta turn my heat up in. I'm gonna turn some of my heat up in here. Woo, that's the last thing I'm gonna do is turn my heat up in here. I gotta turn my air conditioning on in here. Okay. 
didn't have it too hot in here. Well, you got breathing issues as it is. So I'm gonna bother you the damage. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's hard. To this day, I don't even, because I tried going back and playing my old Atari system, and to this day, um, I don't understand how I got such a heavy thrill out of that game. I really can't understand that on the Atari. I just, I don't understand that, you know what I mean? Because, you know, the games now today are freaking through the roof. Games we have now are through the roof today. So, you know, you ever try to go back and play your old stuff? It's kind of hard to do. And then you realize if you go back, some of the games that you used to play back then are much harder than the games you play now. Shoot, I remember I had on, um, when, uh, I remember when certain games didn't have pause. They didn't have a pause option to pause your game. And I had this game I was playing called Faxodon. I think it was called Faxodon for NES. And I couldn't exactly um, pause the game. So I had to leave that 13-inch TV on all day, all night. Because if you did, there was no, it was, not, it was too much you could save on the game either. Ah, uh, we did that already. I did game trailers, but YouTube is real finicky about a lot of stuff, man. They're real finicky about it. Besides, I do gaming outside on my uh, outside on the um, on the uh, on the deck out there. We do a lot of gaming out there. Bring out the PS4. We do some gaming out there. When the PS5 comes out, oh yes, I can't wait. Anybody know the price of this thing? Does anybody know? The price of the PS4 because man, they are not telling, they're not saying jack about it. Because I don't even know what this thing costs. I mean, usually when they would show off, you know, have you seen some of them coming out? I've seen, yeah, I've seen it already, but I'm, I'm still waiting. Uh, I'm still waiting to see what this thing is going to cost. That's what I'm waiting for to see how much it's going to cost. If it's going to cost me how much money is this thing going to cost? Because they got two of them. They got two of them with two different drives. They got one with the with the uh, with the um, that comes with the disc and one without the disc. I'm getting the one without the disc because I, I download everything, so there's no point. Trying to find. Hold up, mate. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I gotta go back to show you which one real quick. We're doing the contrast. Let me get calibration. That's what I want. Yeah, I gotta find, I gotta find, um, I gotta find, uh, I mean, two things I'm concerned about uh, when it comes to the PS5. One of them, the VR glasses. I'm a big fan of their VR glasses. Um, I know they put fans in the, in the VR too, and I hope they do bring it out because that's the reason why I do want that system because I do like VR. Um, but uh, the fan, those things get hot. If you ever had those things on, you will sweat beads in those bad boys. And if you sweat in there, freaking the screen gets all fogged up, and you got to keep pulling them off, and you got to keep wiping them down. So I just stick a fan in front of me so I can stay nice and cool when I'm playing them. Um, the number one biggest gripe, freaking wires. There's so many freaking wires coming out of this thing. I mean, you want to see what I'm talking about? Come here, I'm going to show you. So there's my system right over there. So my, my, my headset's right there. Yeah, mine's got spikes on them. So there's my, my PS4 setup. I figured it didn't have enough attitude, so I made it bad to the bone. <laughs> but anyway, um, all these wires down here, see all those wires right there? That's running through the VR system all these wires right there so it's a lot of freaking wires so i'm like if they make it wireless oh that's going to be so sweet yeah that'd be nice yeah that'd be nice i'll pick up you know what i'm gonna tell you right now the minute this thing launches i gotta get a 4k projector for it i have to if this thing is true 4K and it's not used in a form of compressed 4K or any of that, I'll pick up a 4K projector for it. 
I really, I'll tell you the truth, I'm probably going to go with back to a PX747 by ViewSonic, and I'll tell you why. It has a 235.1 option on it, and I might want to do a 235.1 screen for my PS5. I'm going to do a Jet Black 235.1. I saw the back of my ball head. <laughs> All right, people. Well, just showing you the contrast demonstrations on the black screen. Like I said, um, I got to get out of here real quick. I got those orders today to get out of here. So that's going to be next. I got to get those orders out. Um, if your tracking number hasn't activated, give it time. It will be activating soon. Okay, so don't worry about that. Um, I'll probably have orders coming in today, so um, I got to contact my suppliers because we're out. Of, we're out because, like I said, we got hit with a bunch of orders yesterday. Which thank you so much. I do appreciate the support. I really do. Um, and we have to get ready to get those uh, new orders, so get them set up and ready to go. Uh, so that's basically about it. If we don't get any rain today, hopefully I can take the uh, thousand lumen projector outside because I wanted to get it in the evening hours, which I didn't get a chance because Wi-Fi decided to have a hissy fit with me. And I couldn't get the, um, I couldn't get the, uh, um, I couldn't get the, uh, by the time everything got set up and Wi-Fi clicked in, it was already pretty much nighttime. So that's why I had the lights on out there. But I would have really enjoyed if I could have got it done um, when the lights were, um, when it was evening hours. Because that would have been pretty cool to watch a thousand projector at 10 feet back pull off an image in evening hours. So uh, I'm going to see how this day goes if it doesn't rain if it does rain then what i'll do is the next demonstration what we're going to do is we're going to go out here oh there it is right there uh we're going to go out here to the front of the house right here and i'll be able to put my projector on the porch where it'll be a little safe i had to clean my windows and i'm going to put that that screen right there, I'm going to paint the rest of it uh, in black and we're going to stick it out there and we're going to do a demonstration as it rains on the screen. Because then at least I can do that with my projector being protected. Alright, so there's a bit of an eye opener for you. Right there, I'm going to take a picture of that because I like that. I got to put that, um, take, send that over to Facebook. So that just shows you the idea. Of course, like I said, when it comes to the black technology, the white levels are going to be a tad low. It is. It's going to be a tad low. But it's not going to be anything that's going to disrupt your picture quality where basically it's going to be so dark you can't see the screen. And as you can see in this picture right here, you can see the contrast levels, which the gray screen is not being able to have the ability to be able to pick up. You're seeing how bright the greens are. Look at the flower. Look at the individual petals on the flower. Looks like that, you know, it's like, it looks like that cake frosting. And what I'll do is I have lens shift on here, so we'll just move that image over. There we go. So we can do a half and half. So you can see how bright the um, white levels are on the 12 is. See, like I said, in my demonstrations, before I sign off here, the 12 can produce contrast, something that a gray screen will never have the ability to be able to do, but it also, too, can produce a high enough white level where it's not going to take away from your picture quality, as you can see right here. I'll get a little closer for you. There you go. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. I'd like to thank you all for your time. Uh, Bird, had a great time talking to you about computers and stuff like that. Hey, and you have time? Have you done a fish tank PC? If you haven't, check that out. That's what they, I'm pretty sure you probably know about it and some of the stuff you just displayed. But uh, if you ever submerge a PC, I've done a few fish tank PCs. Uh, email me. I'll show you some of my work on some of the things I used to build back in the day. Um, I, I did a few steampunk PCs. I do custom uh, work on PCs as in uh, the uh, designs on them to uh, give it a more like realistic theme to it. 
Uh, but email me, I'll show you some of the stuff I built. I actually built a PC uh, using uh, uh, Tupperware containers. A lot of you not, you have to see it. And it was filled with vegetable oil. It was pretty freaking cool. Uh, yeah, you haven't done? Yeah, vegetable oil? Yeah, you gotta do one of them, man. That's mind blowing, man. The first time I did a vegetable oil PC, I literally thought I was gonna see God. Cause I'm sitting here with a power supply, plugged into a freaking fish tank, and I'm pulling vegetable oil, I'm like, yeah. It's, this, this is where it ends, right here. But man, it's, it's amazing because if you were to stick this in water, you would short out your equipment. If you were to stick your hand in, you'd be electrocuted. But you can literally stick your hand in here and touch the power supply and not get electrocuted and it will carry a current. It is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. But here's the downside about it. Um, a few of the fish tank uh, PCs that I built, I did a Bioshock one. Uh, after a while, the oil does become a bit thick. And after a while, it turns into a, like a gelatin form, where basically something that might have weighed about 10 pounds now will weigh about 50 pounds to move. So you got to consider that too. Uh, also too, if you're going to throw anything in there, make sure you max it out because you do not want to be sticking your hand in that oil to go change out parts to upgrade. You don't want to do that. Max out everything on the board, do everything that has to be done, and just drop it in there. Um, I would remove all the fans. One of the mistakes people make is when they do the fish tank oil PCs is the fact that they think that if they take the fan off the CPU, this will make the system cool down. No, it's a bad idea um, because, hey, how you doing, David? Uh, it's a bad idea, and I'll tell you why. Because that GPU is going to, and GPU, uh, yeah, GPU is going to heat up. And as it starts to heat up, that oil is going to heat up also. So you're going to end up cooking your PC. You know how you get around that? Just get a basic liquid cooling uh, system, just, you know, just, um, just all in one that has the radiator system, the fan intake system, and just the uh, copper CPU, and just connect that right on top of it. Make sure you keep those fans outside. You don't want those running through the uh, vegetable oil, and that will allow you to be able to cool down your CPU Why? so it doesn't cook or basically generate too much heat because you will literally cook that oil. That oil will start to boil a little bit off that CPU. So you want to make sure you put a liquid cooling system on there. Yeah, but if you're doing, if you're doing liquid cooling where people do the whole, like, where they daisy chain it, they daisy chain it from, and they, and they use the old copper plates, so they daisy chain it from RAM, they daisy chain it from CPU, uh, GPU, uh, um, the hard drive, stuff like that. Those particular ones, I don't particularly like too much. I mean, I, to some people, they, they may be amazing, but for me, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of leakage and some uh, and maybe uh, corrosion buildup inside of those tubes. That's why you have to keep flushing them out. But and on top of that, you have to have constant flow. You have to have these little fans inside. Like a kind of like a, um, a windmill that allows the, um, the, 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 the uh, uh, what do you call it, like the antifreeze kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, the antifreeze kind of solution to flow smoothly through those tubes. So that one, new. No. I don't do those because I'm terrified that something may go wrong and I might end up having leakage or something throughout my entire system. But the ones that I have used by, uh, I don't know if Cool PC or Frozen PC is still selling stuff or New Egg is still selling stuff like that, but... I like the ones that come with the all-in-one. It's kind of like a gel-like kind of a, a liquid in there that basically once it starts to cool, basically it's kind of a gel liquid, so it, it's impossible for that to leak out. But it's like an all-in-one system. But that's what I usually use. I've never had a problem with them at all, never. All right, with that being said, thank you all. I gotta get out of here. And dude, hit me up with an email. I'll send you the videos on YouTube of my custom-designed PCs I used to do back in the day. Thank you all, God bless.